Hey guys, Brad from Vintage Axe Revival. Uh, it's hot in the garage tonight, so I'm wearing a homemade tank top. Look kind of like a dork, but um, I want to do another video on burning handles. Um, I want to start from the beginning and go to the end and kind of show you what I do. Um, not that I am an expert, but I've been doing quite a few of them and they've been turning out pretty good, so I just wanted to share with you what I do. So a couple things um, to start with, map gas. Um, it does burn hotter than the propane, the stuff that's in the blue tank, okay? And what I've found when I'm working with hickory handles, um, less with ash, more with hickory, that to get the color that I want, I have to spend too much time, uh, what I call dwell time, on the wood, which heats it to the core and tends to try, or excuse me, tends to cause cracking or what they call checking, okay? Um, and I try to avoid that at all costs. So by using map gas, I've found that I can get the color that I want with less dwell time. So um, I use this Benzomatic. Um, I'm really happy with this. It's been great. Open it up, uh, hit the button. It's got a little safety right here that allows you to lock it on so that's pretty cool so you don't have to do too much i also found that the other ones my hands were getting really cold um, because the can gets really cold when you're using it and this gives me something more substantial to hold on to so just to throw you throw that out at you the other thing that i do that i think is ultra important is uh right here welding gloves okay um, at least for the hand that's going to be holding on to the handle, okay? Uh, you pretty much can't do it without it. Um, I'm doing a handle tonight. Let me grab it. Doing a handle tonight, which is a Killinger uh, double bit handle. Looks like it's about a 28. Um, I'm doing it for a gentleman on his Black Raven, okay? Uh, the head's already been fitted. Now here's the important thing that I feel personally is really important. In order to get the color all the way to the top, you gotta burn your handle before you do the final head placement, okay? Um, what happens is if you seat the head and you hang it and you do all that and then you want to try to burn it, the heat, number one, uh, the head is steel. It reflects the heat away from the um, the handle, and it causes just a dark line right here, and it doesn't look good, um, to be perfectly honest with you. So um, I got people texting me, so I apologize. I'm flipping the, the messages away here. So we're going to burn it, and then we're going to seat the head. And what you're going to find is that when you do a proud hang, that same color is gonna come all the way through, and that looks really cool, um, in my opinion. Um, give you an example of that. Um, that's kind of a crappy example, but that color comes all the way through, and you get a nice, even burn. Now, this is kind of an antique candle. It's not very dark, but that gives you an idea. All right, so, I'm getting my glove on, all right? We're gonna position you guys in such a way that hopefully you can see what's going on here and not just my fat belly. Um, I'm gonna fire up the gas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, this is gonna be not a horribly dark burn. Um, you know, it's, it's gonna be a nice burn to bring out the, the grain, but it's not gonna be charred by any means. I don't really like charring, to be honest, but what I'm trying to do is bring out the grain and do a little bit of what they call flame conditioning, season it a little bit, okay? So, here we go, all right? I'm gonna try to hold it up a little bit so you guys can see this, all right? So I'm gonna just do smooth strokes over the handle. And I'm just doing smooth, Easy strokes.
Hopefully you guys can see this okay. I'm, I'm going off the end. I'm not coming back. I'm starting at this end and I'm terminating on that end and I'm lifting up. Just like when you're filing, you file in one direction. I'm burning in one direction. It gives me a lot more control. If I try to go back like this, that's just too much heat and you're just gonna end up with something that's really blotchy. And I think that's the number one issue with guys who are trying to burn is you're ending up with these really blotchy uh, outcomes and a lot of that has to do with just your dwelling too much time in one spot all right now what I did is I got a nice even burn and now what I'm doing is I'm going back over it a little bit to give the areas between the dark areas of grain just a tiny bit more darkness or color because I want it to give me just a little, I don't want it to be such a stark contrast. I want it to blend a little bit. Um, and you'll see what the end result here is. All right, so there's an example. I just dwelled a little bit too much time right there and I got a dark spot. But here's the thing. I'm going to show you how to fix dark spots, a light dark spot, okay? Not a dark, dark, dark burn. It's not going to happen. You're just going to have to sand it off and start over again, all right? Now, this doesn't have a lot of extra material above the eye of the axe, so I'm going to have to, I want to burn nice and even to the top. All right, so that's that end. Now I'm going to do this end, all right? I'm going to stand out here a little bit so you guys can see it. I start just beyond where I already went, where I already was, and I'm going all the way to the end. I'm lifting and I'm starting over again on every pull. And I'm rotating in my hand as I go. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. I know it's not that easy. key is you got to rotate, don't dwell, okay now you can see I've got good even burn but I want this ashy color a little bit, this grayness a little bit so now I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to add a little bit of ashiness to the areas between the dark areas of green. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but this handle got a little couple drops of oil on it, and those drops of oil are kind of changing the color a little bit. That won't really matter because I'm going back. And I'm kind of just blending those two areas. Now, all right, I'm going to shut the torch off for a second here so I can just show you this. This thing is hot. So that, in my opinion, is a nice, even burn, okay? There might be a small spot here or there, but you can sand it. And what I do is I sand with 400 grit um, just to... So before I put this in boiled linseed oil... When you burn it, you're raising grain. And if I ran a piece of steel wool over this right now or a cotton ball, it would catch and there you'd see there's little hooks, especially where edges of the grain are um, not run out, but edges of the grain are exposed. So I always sand it with 400 grit. And I keep that in mind when I'm burning it so that I know that I'm going to be removing a little bit of the color when I sand it okay just a tiny bit because it's only 400 i'm just sanding it lightly just to knock it down and get the get the uh the high spots out okay i think it needs just a tiny bit more color in a couple spots so i'm going to add that
It's a little bit like painting, guys. If you've ever painted, you know, with a spray can or an airbrush, and I'm just flicking the ends here a little bit. You can't really see it, but what I'm doing is I, when I get to the end, I just give it a little flick. I kind of do a circle in the air and I bring the torch back to the handle. Now what can also mess you up is if your tank, your gas tank is like half full, when you do this movement like this, it shakes and around. It like causes you to kind of do goofy things. You gotta be conscious of that. You gotta be in control of the gas. I mean, it does shift around. Now this luckily is almost a completely empty tank. It's given me a great flame, but I don't have this wobbliness going on that I do with a half tank that can come sometimes cause a dark spot. It'll just like cause you to dwell too long on one spot. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done here with this part of it. Just a little shade of color here and there. Don't be afraid. You can always come back and sand it. I've had some where I've raised grain so much that I've had to like pretty much sand all of the color from the burning off of the handle in certain spots and then go back and touch it up. You can do that. So don't, don't freak out. Don't get all nervous. It's not the end of the world, man. It's just wood. So right now I'm adding a little bit of that ashy color to the large areas between the grain. Just to give it a little bit more depth. And that looks great. Now, you notice I didn't do the end yet, all right? I'm really picky about this. Production handles, they're always gonna have some kind of dent, some kind of staple mark, some kind of mark from where the lathe was gripping this piece of wood. I don't want that on my axes. When I'm selling an axe, I want it to be absolutely perfect. So when I'm done hanging the axe and I pound on the bottom here, I cut the end off just about an eighth of an inch to get rid of any holes. I sand it, I rebevel it, then I burn it, okay? So it's hot. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab some 400, okay, and I just go over it nice and easy, all right? You don't have to go crazy, just nice and easy. It's very hot, so you might want to do it with a glove underneath your sanding paper. All right, that's basically how to burn a handle. Um, then what I do while it's still hot, I do put it directly into my boiled linseed bath. I boil linseed it up to about here. I don't go all the way to the top because I glue my wedges and I want my wedges to stick. Okay, I want that glue to adhere to the wood and if it's got oil all over it, it doesn't help it that much, okay? So hopefully you guys find that educational, just seeing somebody do it maybe, um, getting an idea of how to just smoothly apply the heat to the wood, all right? Thank you for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Have a great night. This is Brad from Vintage Axe Revival.